Hello again, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for stopping by, and again, appreciate all the support. Anyways, time to talk about a little MiG-15. Um, been neglecting this for far too long. In opening up, you guys might be asking, why did I put a shot of a critical hit in here? Well, we'll go into details in a little bit, but first of all, I want to take a minute to kind of pay it forward. Uh, if you guys remember about three weeks ago, Green Fury went ahead and featured me, and and he really helped my channel take off, and, and that's probably how most of you guys found me. Well, like I say, I want to pay it forward. There's another guy in the community that does tutorials and wants to help and, and bring back to the community. And his name is Defin, or Define, however you want to call him. Either way, I highly suggest you check him out. Just go to YouTube, it's D-E-F-Y-N, and you'll find him. And uh, if you look through, this this guy knows his stuff. He's, he's far better than me. He's far more detailed in his uh, tutorials. He really, really knows the ins and outs of each aircraft, and he can really help you out far better than I would. I highly recommend you go check him out. I highly recommend you support him because he could do a lot more for you than, than I can, to be honest. I'm going for the beginner's approach. He's going to give you the full Monty. So do me a favor, guys. Go check him out, and if you like what you see, leave him a sub. He really deserves it. He's working hard. He's trying to give you uh, guides for researching uh, jets in each nation. Um, so anyways, go check him out, guys. So, moving on. In this episode, um, unfortunately, guys, this is, a, this is a fairly long one. I hate doing long videos, but there's a lot of information I'm going to try and pack in here. And you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck in this video. Um, what am I going to show you? All right, so I'm going to show you the tips and tricks of flying with the MiG-15 biz. We're going to start with the German one. And then I'm also going to show you guys a couple uh, tips on how to fly it with nighttime. Um, nighttime matches, everyone hates them. Um, there's a couple tricks you could do. To make things a little bit better we're gonna cover that lastly I'm going to leave you with a little bit of footage of a match which well a one-on-one -on -one that I ended up fighting and I didn't lose it but it is gonna be the most cancerous thing that you can experience in this plane and that's gonna be a min fuel saber um, min fuel sabers definitely give this plane a run for its money um, that'll be the closing clip so without further ado back to the MIG gameplay this is the MIG 15 bis the German version I highly recommend flying the German one first just because the teams are a lot better. The CLs are there to carry you just in case you screw up. It's a lot tougher to fly this on the Russian teams because the Russian teams fall apart pretty quick. You never know what you're going to get with them. And going back to why I threw a crit hit as my opening scene. Well, unfortunately that is the reality of flying this plane. And I say this and I, and I want you guys to understand that the getting kills in this plane like you can get the hits all day. I mean, it's 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 easy to it's easy to turn fight with people, but getting hits and then actually getting kills it's it's two whole different ball games in this plane. And I want you guys to understand this because I don't want you to crit hit a saber. I don't want you to critically damage him, and then I don't want you to chase him to try and get that kill. I don't want you to get salty because somebody else takes your kill. Because that, unfortunately, is what happens in this plane a lot. You're going to get crits, and somebody else is going to take your kill. Well, the thing that people don't realize is the second you have a crit hit on somebody, they're not much of a threat anymore. Let the other guy get the kill. Because if you can take your focus off that one guy and worry about the guy that's behind you or worry about the guy that's on your teammate, you're going to be doing a lot better for your team. And the MiG-15 or the MiG-17, both of them, honestly, they, they rely... They rely on teamwork because because of that that crit hit problem. You know the guns, they're not super effective on this aircraft, and it's kind of a shame because you don't have a lot of ammo to start with. So, moving on. So there's there's a couple things you have to know about MIGs, and there's a couple things you have to know about sabers in order to fly this aircraft correctly. Um, the biggest thing you got to think about is MIG-15, MIG-17. They are high altitude fighters. These aircraft perform far better than a saber or an F9F, most of these aircraft that you're going to be fighting against, they perform a lot better. They have a lot more power at altitude. And on top of that, a MiG-15, around 700 kilometers and lower, it's, it's going to outturn a Saber. So let's go into a, a new match here. So this is, this is how I fly it. And I'm no expert on this plane, but I'm going to tell you what I do, and this is how I stay alive. So I climb off the bat. I, I try and get my altitude to about 2,500, maybe 3,000 meters right off the bat. And going back to, you know, MiGs perform better at altitude than Sabres do. So if anybody's climbing with me, 
that's a saber i mean they're they're only signing their death warrant because you outperformed them up here so this is this is a typical match for me right here so i've climbed up to 2500 meters i'm grabbing my speed right now speed's important just like any other aircraft so i've got my first head on this guy's going to be really slow so if he wants to turn back around he ain't going to get me of course there we get hits that's that's typical of mig guns i'm not going to get caught up on him i see a mystere coming at me He's pulling for me, so I just go up. I just go straight up. And this guy is not going to be able to touch me. There is nothing he can do. So I'm energy trapping him right now. I'm going to come right back down on top of him. I've got a lot of distance right here, but this is this is, this is is how I play MIG. I want to energy trap people. So we're going to drop back down on him. And he is pretty much stalled right now. You can tell because he's got the little white wingtip streamers off his plane when he came back around. Pop a couple shots, and he's gone. Dodge the F2, and then rinse and repeat. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up and grab a little bit of altitude. We're just going to do this yo-yo thing. And so I see this F86. He's still he's still up high, so I know he doesn't have a lot of energy now. So I'm just going to keep going for him. He's slow. He's very slow. I'm not even going that fast. I'm only doing 640, 650 right now, and I'm catching him. So this is, this is a testament to the difference between sabers and MiGs at altitude. So if you fight up here, you're fighting on your terms. If you fight on the deck, you're fighting on a Saber's terms. Take a couple pop shots. I get the crit. I'm not going to chase him. He's going to dive out. He knows he's damaged. He's going to dive out. You know what? He is not a threat anymore. I'm leaving him. My teammates can have him. This is the unfortunate problem with this aircraft is you are going to get crits. Don't chase him to the deck because when you put yourself on the deck, you're going to have issues. So I'm looking around me. I'm making sure I'm clear. I'm going to drop my altitude a little bit. I still want to kind of be the highest in the sky. So I'm looking around me, and I see this one guy coming in behind my friendlies. So I want to try and give him a hand. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to dive a little bit. And then I look behind me, and I see more coming in. So I decide maybe this is not a good idea, especially when one of them is a saber. And I'm going to be going fast if I go on the deck. So I just go back back up. I just, like I say, it's like a yo-yo. All I'm doing is is trading airspeed for altitude and vice versa so like I say and then I look around and I've got my F-86F that's coming at me and we're gonna go ahead and cut scene here I'm gonna save this to the end because this is the min fuel saber that I find out about so you guys are gonna get to watch this at the end and so I told you I'd teach you a couple tricks on how I deal with night maps um, if you notice it's actually not that dark here um, you can see pretty well and there's a trick to this one so if you go into your options, go into post effects settings, make sure your tone mapping is set to polynome. And if you take the C slider and you slide it all the way up to five, you'll see there's a huge difference. And, and that's what I do. My gamma settings are all the way up already. This just adds to it. And so, and, and I'll be honest, I did just a little bit of boost to make it just a slight bit brighter for the video. And that's just because of YouTube. But this is about what I see when I see a night map. It's, it's actually, it's actually doable. Now, the spotting system is still kind of goofed with it, but you saw, like, I just saw those tracers in the distance. It's actually pretty easy to track people. And at the same time, if you look up, you can see their contrails flying over. If you use a headset, you can hear the planes coming too. So there's, there's a lot of situational awareness that it gives you with night maps. And the other thing I try to avoid is, is I don't want to stay spotted for very long on a night map because if you're the only one spotted, it's like moths to a light. Everybody will come after you. So try to not stay spotted for very long. Right now, I know I'm unspotted. So I'm just going to continue on. I know that there's two or three guys climbing in front of me. I can see their dots. They're slightly to my left. I'm just watching, making sure that hunter's not coming after me. I'm going to do a slight turn. There's one guy low. I just want to make sure he goes under me. And I just spotted him. So unfortunately, he probably just spotted me, which means the team can see me now. Thanks to proxy spotting, the whole team can see me now. So I'm just going to kind of continue off into the distance. I don't think this guy's going to be able to spot me at one kilometer behind him in the dark, so I'm going to sneak up on him. This is the typical scenario, like I was saying, uh, MiGs have more power at altitude. So I'm going to try and get this guy. The other trick with MiGs, um, their guns are actually pretty slow. It's 690 meters per second for each gun. So you're going to have to put a lot of lead in, um, and you'll see that in a lot of my shots in this, and it's, it is tough to aim MiG guns, especially when you have issues with compression. So, but. This right here, you can see this guy's trying to outclimb me, and it ain't gonna work in a MiG. It doesn't. 
And so now he's crit. I'm going to try and finish him off. But he's going to dive out. And I'm honestly... I'm not going to chase him to the deck because I know I'm spotted. I know I'm about to get swarmed. So I take another shot at him. And I leave him. And I move on. Because I know that there's going to be more coming right now. And as I pull up, I find out the hard way that there was. If you look... I'm pulling up. I can hear an engine sound right now. And as I look below me, I hear it and I see an F2 coming up. He's not spotted, but God, I can see those tracers. Those are F2 tracers. So I just keep going vertical. And finally, I see him flip over. Because if he follows me vertical, he ain't going to be able to keep up. I'm already at 5K. So, like I said, MiGs are very good at going up. They have very good power at altitude. A Saber cannot hang. So now I'm back up to altitude, um, decently high, nothing's really going to be a big threat up here. So I'm just kind of, I'm watching around, I'm, I'm looking right now, nobody on my team's in serious trouble at the moment. I'm looking, I'm trying to find aircraft with low energy situations, or somebody that's close to my altitude. So I'm looking at this Venom, and the Venom's a squirrely plane, so he's, you know, he's a really good turn fighter, so it's, I kind of want to get him out early because I know my teammates are going to probably spend a lot of time on him trying to kill him. And being a night map, it's not going to take much for the enemy team to come in unspotted and, and wipe up and clean up my team. So, I'm still looking for a low energy situation. I'm just kind of pacing back and forth, slowly dropping my altitude. I don't want to give it all up. And I see the Venom. He goes straight up. This is my opportunity. So I sneak up on him. I know that since I've been high, he has no idea that I'm coming right now. So I'm slowly sneaking up on him. He goes vertical. I'm salivating right now. This is, this is, a, this is great for a MiG. Just like that, he's gone. And I'm going straight back up. And look at this, I'm already back up to 4K. Nobody's going to touch me up here right now. Everybody's on the deck. So the rest of this match is kind of boring. I'm not really going to show you. Um, it gets cleaned up pretty quick. But I wanted to go to this scene real quick. And this is exactly what I'm talking about with how the MiG actually outperforms Sabres. So this guy, I saw him kind of turning back at me after I made the pass. So I decided to go straight up. No, there's no way in hell he's going to be able to touch me. But then it kind of got caught off guard because here comes an A5. I'll be honest, I was kind of sweating a little bit when this guy came at me. So I turned in towards him to make him pull up his nose harder. Now granted, this is an A5, so it's not probably the ideal situation, but they perform very well at slow speeds. But I still have more power. And even though I'm close to stall speed right now, I still have a lot of controllability. And look at this, he's stalling out, I'm stalling out, but I'm not going to gain that much speed. I'm going to keep my flaps out real quick. I'm going to be able to get my nose on. He cannot maneuver at this speed. I can. And that's the game right there. I mean, he's, he's done. It was, I'll be honest, he probably should have had me on the first pass, but he didn't. And, and the MiG it just performs better at altitude. So back to the, the min fuel saber fight. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I know this has been a really long video, guys. I apologize, but I want to try and at least touch base on everything. So this guy, I didn't realize that he was min fuel right off the bat. I didn't go into this with a ton of energy, but I know that at this altitude, I can fight him. So I'm going to miss a lot of shots in this, and this it is difficult, like I said, to, to aim big, big guns. But... After he made these two turns, he should not have had this much of an energy advantage over me, but he did, and that tells me that he was min fuel. I should not be able, or he should not be pulling away from me like this. And so I knew I was kind of screwed here, and this is, this is what will happen with min fuel sabers. They, they have such a good power to weight ratio that, well, it kind of sucks. So I try to turn into him. I try to dodge a shot. And it doesn't work, and he hits me. And luckily enough, either his guns just didn't work or his aim's bad. I don't know. So what am I trying to do here? This is this is a perfect situation. A MiG should always win this fight. Now, granted, like I said, midfield sabers are very difficult. But we're on my terms right here. I'm staying slow. I'm keeping my flaps out. I'm trying to keep myself a decent amount of drag so I don't get too fast. You'll see I'm even using the air brake in turns. And that is, that's really just to, to stay slow so that I don't overshoot him and I stay inside his turn. So he makes another mistake here. He really should have ran away. But he didn't. And he decides to go vertical again. And now things are going to change a little bit. I've got my flaps out. I'm still going to outmaneuver him. I've got a little bit more energy this time. He doesn't. 
And so finally, I get to a situation where I can pull on him and I can get shots on. Crazy enough, he's still pulling away. Now I've got a crit hit on him. I don't know where half of these bullets are going, I'll be honest, and this is a frustration with MIG guns. I don't know what to say on that. I don't have any reason. I don't have any explanation. But again, I'm trying to keep all my drag out. I got my air brake out. I've got my flaps out. I'm trying to stay inside his turn. He cannot get a shot on me as long as I'm slow and I stay inside him. And so that's how I'm winning this fight, sort of. He still can't get a shot on me. So he begins to realize that he's not going to win this fight. And so it's just going to play out for a bit. And I'm not going to kill him, unfortunately. I'm going to run out of ammo here. But you can see how much a MiG actually outperforms a Sabre, especially up here at altitude, especially at slow speeds. Don't be afraid to abuse the air brake in a MiG. It's actually to your advantage. In a dive, if I get close to about 900, I put out the air brake so I don't go too fast to compress. Um, like I say, if you ever watch me on streams, I, I definitely abuse the air brake in the MiG. And that's just because of compression. So... I run out of ammo, I pull off of him, he goes vertical, and he pulls the other way. This is my chance to get away, because I'm still doing 700, he can't be doing better than 400 right now. The rest of my team's coming in to clean him up. That's the end of that fight. Unfortunately, I couldn't kill him, but c'est la vie. Enjoy the rest of the footage, guys. Thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, as always. And uh, I hope I answered everything for you. Um, like I say, this is a beginner's guide. I'm really only covering the basics, but uh, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll see you next time.